Therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And the church of God, we say. The people of God, we say. Almighty God, we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ that you will take control of this act of worship as we pray, sing, read a scripture that your name will be glorified. We pray that, Lord, you will help us to put away everything that will distract us and center ourselves to you so that honor and glory will be given unto your name alone. We pray in Jesus' name. The people of God, we all say, we continue into worship as we sing our song of praise printed in your order of service. When peace, like a river, our leader for this worship experience is our own deacon, deacon George Bramfield. Let us continue into worship. When peace, like Thank you. 
We bless the Lord. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. Where peace, like a river, attended my way. When sorrow, like sea, did us through. Almighty God, here we are before your presence once more. Oh God, we give you thanks, oh God, that we can stand in your presence again, Almighty God. Oh God, you are a forgiving God. Oh God, you loved us, oh God, with an everlasting love. Many times, Almighty God, we turn our back upon you. But oh God, you are there to forgive us of all our sins and our trespasses. We thank you today, Almighty God. We thank you, God, that you have blown breath in us. We give you thanks, oh God, that we are stand in the land of the living. Who could it be but Jesus? Almighty God, here we are today, oh God. Give you thanks, oh God, for your sister who has shared his life here on earth, Almighty God. And oh God, you feel fit to take our home, oh God. But oh God, we place ourselves before you today, Jesus. Thank you, oh God, that today we can say thank you, God, for another chance. Oh God, it's all because of you, oh God, we are still standing. Mighty God, bless us today, dear Jesus. Oh God, as we are about to worship in this place, oh God, I pray that God you may be in the midst of us, oh God. Send the angels around us. Fill us, Almighty God, with your Holy Spirit. Because without your Spirit, oh God, we are nothing. Bless us today, dear Jesus. Be with the leader. Be with the preacher, dear God, and spread the word of God. Give us a hope and hear, Almighty God, to digest your word today, dear Jesus. Bless us today as we say thanks to you in Jesus' sweet and precious name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. I've thought about this moment. There are times where I could envision this moment. Um, I never knew exactly how I would truly feel, what my emotions would be. I knew what I thought it would be. And in many ways, it's in line with how I thought it would be. I love my grandmother. I will always remember her. First, I want to just thank each and every one of you for being here, family and friends. Well wishers, this moment is for us. She's no longer with us, she's resting. So this is a moment for us. A moment for us to heal. A moment for us to be comforted and to seek the closure that we all need for a life that was very well lived. I grew up with my grandmother from I was 11 months old. Family who knows this would know. And um, the best I can recall, she beat me twice. <laughs> and um, I, remember, I remember it very well. <laughs> Um, but there were plenty of times that um, she threatened to beat me. And um, I know she did it strictly out of love. I, I recall her 
threatening to beat me because uh, she needed me to drink some tea and eat some hard crackers before I go to school because she knew that if I didn't, what was gonna happen? And as much as she's threatened and tried to get me to do so, sometimes it, it, it worked out because even to this day, it's still difficult for me to drink tea or have breakfast early in the morning. But I could recall her coming to pick me up by my brother <laughs> because I was so sick after getting off the bus coming from school um, and she had to make tea and come over and bring for me so I could drink and really walk <laughs> to come back over. Um, my grandmother, she, she cared more about others than she cared for herself. She, she sacrificed self for her family. She loved her family. You know, I desired my grandmother's love and her approval. And a big part of that is because I, she was the first person that I truly experienced love from. She's the first person I felt loved me, and she was the first person I knew I loved. I could remember hearing her whispering to my grandfather, Thurston, go open the door now and let them in after my brother and I were hanging out outside. So we did a dance <laughs> and was locked outside. I know eventually she ended up coming to open the door for us because she didn't want us to be out there. I could recall her coming to wake us up in the night so we won't pee the bed. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then Thurston would <laughs> hang us in the morning, of course, in the bed wet. I remember her tender and loving care for me when I was sick and just begging Teresa not to kill me. I, it is just so hard at this moment. It, it truly hurts because for the people who know, I mean, She's gone now, but in many ways, I felt like I lost her before this moment. I recall seeing her, talking to her, and she didn't remember who I was. And honestly, that broke my heart. It truly did. But I knew she was loving. She was shy, but she was loving. She cared for her family. She cared for me. And I love her dearly. I remember. I had her sold some phone cards to earn a little extra. And I remember coming here and she made it her duty that I didn't have to spend any money. She, would, she, she was like, I'm gonna take care of everything, all of your needs. And she did just that. She gave me more than I gave her. I remember her pakasa. I don't know who recalls pakasa. It was, it was something. I've never seen it anywhere else or tasted it from anyone else, but it was good stuff, man. I remember her chicken, her fried chicken. I've never seen her one day in her life eat chicken, but she made some of the best fried chicken that I ever had. You know, um, one of my most fond memory that I can recall was her climbing a breadfruit tree. And mark you, this was when she was in her 60s. She was climbing a breadfruit tree, picking breadfruit. I knew that lady was tough from the go. I used to get a kick out of her words, even in the latter days. You know, she was a linguist, if you want to say that. She would say things like, uh, but I mean, you know, I, you can't do stuff like that. You know, you have to, you have to show some, you have to show some pride. You know, you have to take some pride in yourself. And and she would talk about, oh, you know, you're acting like you have no prejudice. You know, and 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 you know, you 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 you, you can't do better. And and you know, that's not palatable. You know, stuff like that. And you know, if you didn't know, you think that she doesn't know what she's talking about, but she did. You know, it was it was just so great. And. One of the lasting things that I have 
I recall, this is before WhatsApp and Digicel and whatever. Um, I left here when I was 13 and when I migrated and a lot of family, does, they don't even really know this, but for me, getting a letter, it made my world because I couldn't call on the phone, there was no talking, there was, there was nothing. So when I got a letter, it meant the world to me. I recall my grandmother writing me letters, and these are letters that are over 20 something years ago. I'm talking close to 30 years ago. Back then, postage was a dollar ten cents. I'm talking about a dollar ten cents Jamaican. I don't even think they have ten cents here anymore. And those letters, they, they brought such joy, such pride, such comfort in times when I was just so lonely and I just needed to be able to connect. And to this day, I have every single one of those letters, over 20 of them. I still keep them in my possession. You know, my hope, my hope has always been that my grandmother wouldn't suffer and that her heart would be in the right place. I thank God she never suffered and I hope and I pray that her heart was in the right place. I am looking forward to seeing her more than anyone who's ever passed on before. I am so looking forward and I pray that I will be saved, ready, and I hope that every single one of us here and in the sounding of my voice will make our calling an election sure that we can see her when Christ returns. We all need to make sure our hearts in the right place. And finally, I just want to acknowledge a couple people. Um, I want to acknowledge Ms. Carol. Ms. Carol, I thank you so much. You meant so much to our family, more than you'd even know. And that's why I want to publicly thank you for everything that you did for my grandmother in the latter days. We love you. Thank you so much. And Charlie, the family knows what you have done. Not only could we not have done it, but you did it with such pride. You did it with such love. You wouldn't even know. And personally, I thank you so much. And you know how I feel. The world will never know what God knows. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you, everyone. I think Garrett has uh, said it all, all in a nutshell. I don't think I can top this. But then again, I have my two cents to put there. I was the only girl in that household of four other boys. And my grandmother was very, very overprotective of me. Um, it's, I did say today I am not going to cry, and I did say she had lived a full life, so we're going to celebrate her life today. And um, also, she's the, the greatest, greatest grandma that you could, a person could ever have. So guess what? I beat Garrett because he was 11 months, I was 8 months. So, there you go. Um, some of my fem moments that I have with her is, as Garrett said, I didn't get as much whooping as, as because I was the only girl. But at the same time, at the same time, there was stuff that I couldn't do and would never have happened. Um, 
one of the funnest moments that I have with her is was back when, when we had with the daylight saving times. So the time changes. And they were, you know, kids were being kidnapped. And, you know, we didn't want to be left out there. So what she would do when I get off the bus from school, they would come and meet me. Every time we would hear a car go by, we would dash in the bushes. It was the funniest thing to see my grandmother did that. You know, she participated in doing that, and it wasn't a problem doing it. Um, she, she, she was like the mother, the grandmother, the everybody. There was her cooking. Forget about that. That woman could throw down. And I'm sorry, y'all, but who do not eat pork, I am, I am again, I am going to apologize. But when that woman does her thing, it is done. Um, I will always, always remember her as a girl. But let me tell you this, as Gary has said it, um, it was one of the things that breaks my heart that she did not remember me, who I was. But guess what though? Every so often, Aunt Charlie would call me and said she needs me to sweep the yard. So, I appreciate that. Okay, so I cannot come as close to say how great of a grandmother she, had, she was. And I will always and always, always love her. The memory is like 100. And I'm gonna greatly, greatly miss her. Miss Essie Patrick, or less, Mama, whatever you want to call her, I miss you. Miss you dearly. And as I said, I am not going to cry today. We are going to celebrate her life. And Aunt Charlie, thank you. I remember the days too when you would come down the block with your slippers and she'd be like, Girl, you're not going to school today. You bet it's fifty dollar you go to school. Thank you all. And I love you, and I love you, and I love you. Thanks, everyone. She strongly believed in prayer 
and that it was important in the life of every believer. In her former years, Sister Patrick was very involved in the preparation of meals for a harvest supper held at the church. She had a beautiful soprano voice, and although she was not a member of the choir, she was asked to assist with singing on special occasions. Her life was one of love, peace, and humility. Seeds of love, kindness, respect, and faith were shown by her as she influenced many lives as she lived in close communion with God. For a number of years, Sister Patrick had been ailing, hence she was unable to attend church as she was confined to home. Whenever she was visited by her pastor and church family, she was very cheerful and in good spirit. She was very alert and she participated in the devotional exercises. Hearts were blessed and everyone felt rejuvenated. On the morning of May 1, 2022, Sister Patrick peacefully passed away to be with her Lord. For sure, she will be greatly missed by her family, friends, and well wishers. God saw the road was getting rough. The hills were hard to climb. He gently closed her loving eyes and whispered, Peace be thine. The golden gates could open. God saw she needed rest. God gardens must be beautiful, for He always picks the best. Her life is a beautiful memory, her absence a silent grief. She sleeps in God's beautiful garden, in the sunshine of perfect peace. May her cherished memories linger in our lives. Betsy and Essie. I met Miss Essie here at church. You know, we have this special part in the service that we greet each other. And so, during those greetings on Sunday mornings, one Sunday, she just stopped and looked at me and she said, you just come in like one of my daughter. And, and I said to her, so just take me for one of your daughter then. And she said, adopt me, I go do. Me, I go adopt you. And from that Sunday, she said that she and I become very close very, very close. And so, we had convention here on Sunday. And I didn't know that she, she was at the convention. And during the greetings, I was going around and I was greeting everybody. And she was sitting right down there at the, the seat before the door. She and Sister Merkel. And when I turned around and saw her, I said, Mama, you stay here. And she said, yes, long time may I watch you. <laughs> because she didn't get her greetings as yet. So she was watching me to see if I was coming to greet her. And that was Mama. She was just, she was just a nice, simple, quiet person. And I just take on to her because of the love that she had. I left here and went to Sweat Hill. And after I left now, I couldn't get to see her in church. So 
One day I decided to go visit her at her house. And while I was going to visit her, I met some people coming down from New Hope. And they said, you know, sister, you're lost. Where you go? I said, no, some of you lost. I said, I'm going to look for mama. She said, mama? I knew where your mother come from. I said, no, I'm going to look for mama. You don't know mama. Knowing that, I should say, Miss Essie. So I said to her, is this the child mother me talking? I said, oh. I said, oh, Miss Essie, you're going to look for her. I said, yes. I did not know to, to say Miss Essie, so I said Mama, so she didn't realize that I was talking about Sister Charlie's mother. So, because Mama adopted me for her daughter, I started calling her Mama. I don't want to say Miss Essie or Sister Essie or anything. And my sisters has taken me I said, all family, as, I, as if I am just one of them. They haven't treated me like a stranger. And so, Sister Monica said, I am Carl Patrick. <laughs> and no one can, can change my name. So, I went on visiting with Mama, and then Papa took sick. <sighs> and after Papa passed away, I came here to the funeral. And when I came to church at the funeral, I was sitting down there at the back seat. And when they were passing, they the rose. Somebody passed me one of the rose. And when it was time to come up here with the rose, somebody said, Where you go? You have family? So I just turned around and said, Yes, you see. I said, Yes, you know. So, Papa, take me too. So I just said Papa and Mama, because they were my second parents, because my other parents were far away, and God has blessed me with these other parents. And so, after Papa passed, I went to visit Mama one day. And my sister Monica was there. Everybody else was gone. And sister Monica said, everybody gone, leave me. It's just me alone left. So I have to stay until somebody can come and take care of mama. I did not think about it. I did not waver my mind about it. I just said to her, where is still mama man to look at somebody? She said, what do you say? I said, yes. Mary stay with mama until we get somebody. Because mama can't stay here alone. And sister Charlie can't manage. She need help. So she said, okay. But my sister Charlie, <laughs> my sister Charlie said, You sure? You sure? He said, Yes, me sure. Me sure. Because Mama can't stay here alone. So me, I go stay with her. 
I did not. It's when I reach home, I said something to Brother Joe. When I reach home, I said to Brother Joe that I'm going to stay with Mama. I'm going to take care of Mama until somebody else come. But as Sister Charlie always said, she had asked God to send somebody to help her. And then Sister Charlie always said, Carol, you sure say so you can't stay? You sure say so you want to stay? We said, I know you see him one sec, you ask God to send somebody to help you with mama. And you still ask if me I go stay. I God send me come come stay with mama. So me now go know where me I stay with mama. And I tell her that my sisters treated me just like a sister. I had eight sisters by Miss Betsy. Eight sisters by Miss Betsy. And I've gained some more sisters from Miss Essie. They have treated me like a sister. They don't treat me like a stranger. And so I'm thanking God today that I, God has spared me. Although some of us are sad, but I know that Mama has lived a full life. I miss her. And I always said I prefer that she she was of the house. Even though when she she's not talking to me. But I prefer if, if she was there and I could just even go and see her. But I love her. But God loves her best. God knows what is best for us. And I just want to encourage my all of my family that is here. Don't wait until we are in the setting to find out about one another, how one another is doing. Don't wait until when we are in the setting, we come and we cry and we mourn. Pay attention to your loved ones when they are alive. When they need you, pay attention. God bless you. Thank you. Shall we worship the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Psalm 118, 24 says, This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. We are here to celebrate the life of our Essie Patrick. And Essie was a lively woman. So today is not a day that we come here and be sad. But let us give thanks in everything. Give thanks in the good and in the bad. Amen. I'm reading on behalf of Essie Patrick's sister, May Clark. She was unable to make it today. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Celebrating the life of my sister, Essie. Essie was an amazing woman. I praise God for her being a part of my life. I am her baby sister, and she did play the role of a big sister in my life. Being 10 years older, she felt the need to take care of me. She had the ability to make everyone feel special in her presence, but I felt extra special. We were separated in my early childhood, but whenever we met, she jumped into action to do whatever she could to make me comfortable. She could rustle up 
a full course meal in a hurry. No matter what time it is, night or day. We don't have the ability to choose our siblings. But if I, have, if I was given the opportunity, I would choose my sister over and over again. Life's challenges has taken its toll on my sister. And I have made, I have been missing her for years since she no longer was able to acknowledge my presence. I miss being able to interact with her and reminisce about past experiences. I will cherish her memory and the positive impact she made on her family and friends. To her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, I know you will mourn her passing, but please be remindful of the legacy she left us. I pray we will celebrate her life to the fullest, looking forward to seeing her again when Jesus comes. I thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. practice really to turn back. But we are not bringing it out of partiality. I'm bringing it out of normality. <laughs> so I'm going to give him a chance to be very nice. Good morning, everyone. First, I must apologize for changing the sequence of the program. Um, but I was having some challenges on the roads this morning. Uh, I'm on the program for a musical tribute, but I, I can't just go to that part of the, the program without saying a little about my grandmother. Um, there's so much to say about her, you know, but I would want to just single out some of the profound characteristics about her that stand out and the other family members and non-family members can relate. Uh, she was the nucleus of our family. She has impacted practically everyone. So there is no one in the family that you know cannot relate to the character that my grandmother was. But as it relates to the profound characteristics about my grandmother, to me personally, she was a person with a lot of common sense, right? Um, I remember times when I wasn't feeling well, and I feel, when I say I wasn't feeling well, it would, it would warrant me going to the hospital or, or that, or that um, case, right? And she always, know or have some sort of home remedy and it has you know it has been with me my wife can relate whenever she has any ailment or whatever it's always the home remedy that we refer to first because of what my grandmother had actually instilled in me and i'm very grateful for that so all i want to say is sleep well. I'm, I'm happy for the years that she has lived on this earth. I'm, I'm happy for the legacy that she has left with the family and her um, other loved ones. And I'm just celebrating the life that she has lived. Peace, peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again. Till we reach that distance
Very saying, My hope is built on nothing less than the My hope is built on nothing less.
is too much to even give to us your only son, Jesus the Christ. As we come today, Lord, we share with you, your church, the gifts. We pray that, Lord, you will open our eyes to see those who are less fortunate than you, these gifts, to bless them. We pray for those who gave and those who never had anything to give. Continue to bless them, but more so, Lord, may they give their lives to you so that you can use them. We pray in Jesus' name and the church of God, we say, Amen. 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 Please be seated. On behalf of the leaders of the church, we want to express thanks to the Patmos Funeral Home for a gift they have sent to the church. And this gift will help with the outreach program of the church. Pass on to the leader of the funeral home, Mr. Patmore, uh, our gratitude. And we know that uh, we will use the gifts to bring glory to God's kingdom. We are very grateful and may God continue to bless you and bless your business. At this time, Lord, uh, church, we will uh, listen to the eulogy. We ask the person stated to do so. We'll call and share with us. Good afternoon again. It's nice to see you here as we celebrate the last, give our, pay our last respect to Sister Essie. Eulogy for the late Essie Patrick. We shall pass this way but once. Any good thing, therefore, that we can do, or any kindness that we can show to anyone, let us do it now. Let us not differ nor de neglect it for we shall not pass this way again. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ dies and lives again, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. The clock of time is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell you just when the hands will stop, at late or early hour. The present only is our own. So live, love, toil with a will. Place no confidence in tomorrow, for the clock may then be still. The prophet Isaiah compared life to a wild flower, which quickly wills and fades. It is for this reason the psalmist David implores us to ask God to teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We are all gathered here today to pay our final respect to Sister Essie Patrick. Sister Essie, Mama, Grandma, as was affectionately called, Another family member, another friend, another community stalwart has gone to be with her maker. Sister Patrick was born to Mabel Nicker and Samuel Powell at Riverside District, Troy Trelawney, on September 14, 1929. It was much celebration in this small community when this little bundle of joy finally made, made her way like a rocket into the arms of this couple. She was the second of six children. She attended the Troy Elementary School where she gained her basic education. After leaving school, she did nanny and housekeeping for a living. She was a neat, prim, and proper young lady who would cause the, uh, the young men to turn around and take a second look whenever she happened to pass them on the road. But she knew exactly what and whom she wanted. 
And so the day finally came when she caught eye of the handsome, dapper, energetic, hardworking local Patrick. Otherwise called her stand. No bleach. Yes, man. The connection, the chemistry was like a bolt of lightning. His charm was intensely irresistible. A strong relationship developed and blossomed into a long and lasting love. And in the year 1958, they walked down the aisle, vowing until death do us part. And that vow was never broken. The union produced seven children, two of whom Orville and Earl predeceased her. Her dapper husband, Thurston, also predeceased her three years ago. Sister Essie was a family-oriented person and was as hard-working as her husband. As a dedicated wife and mother, she went beyond the call of duty to ensure that all went well for the family. The children often wondered how she did it. She didn't work out, but how she stretched the little dollar that her husband brought home each week was unbelievable. She was an excellent cook and a Tony Johan make fashion woman. Yes. One thing was for sure, whenever she had visitors, it would be her delight to show, showcase her sumptuous meals. Her family was everything to her. She made sure her children were taught all the positive attitudes, morals and values that would enable them to be respected and outstanding citizens in society. She just wanted her children to be rounded. She would sometimes try to use some big words that would cause you to keel over with laughter. For example, she would be walking, one would be walking out of the house wearing crushed clothes. She would call him back and say, Garrett, you can't have little prejudice, man. Look at how mash up your clothes is. To the girls wearing the two and clothes, she would say, mm, it looks like needle and thread cuts you off. She never spoiled the child and saved the rod. But issues that needed the man of the house to handle, she would say, hmm, wait till Thurston come. But through it all, these children and grandchildren loved their parents. Hard work was a hallmark of the Patrick's family. While they were taught independence and to be satisfied with what they had. Sister Patrick was loved and respected by members of the community. She was an inner indoor person who didn't love the crowd or the limelight. She was very outspoken. I would just tell you her mind right there and then. She was a peacemaker and would give up her right just for peace sake. She was a giver, as the word says. A giver never lacks. She was never lacking, and the family did all they could to take care of her up to her last moments. She came, became a member in the most unusual way. It's like she had a dream. And when she was near the church by the house up there, just across from that house, it's like she heard a voice saying, Inquirer's class, inquirer's class. So she, when she came by the, the day there, she said, okay. She had her little basket and her head, you know, saying those days, I don't know what if it was a, a, a what on their head top. What's a flat hill? Young people, what's a flat hill and a mountain call? Plateau, yes. But they would keep that basket and it wouldn't shift. And that's how she was walking down the street with the night in her dream. And when the voice said, inquiries, she turned into the gate. And she came in and she joined the inquirer's class in her dream. And she made it a reality. And she said, nobody must baptize her but Reverend Yali Moore. So she wasn't invited here by any special person. It was her vision. She was a faithful member and would be absent from church only when necessary. On two occasions, she was out of church for a while, taking care of her sick mother and son. But as soon as they had passed on, she was back at church again. She was always ready and willing 
to assist with anything that she was asked to do in the church, even to sing on the choir, although she was not a choir member. She was, she was a faithful Sunday school member. Her favorite song was, my faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary. Every morning, one could hear her singing that song as she started her daily chores. Her daughter Beverly was in church this Sunday morning when she got the news that she had passed away. And all she could do to ease that sudden pain was to ask her congregation to join her in singing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Sister Patrick ceased to be that energetic and jovial person after the, the death of her son Orville. She was never the same. It didn't get better, but worse, after her husband died three years ago. She was now confined to her room, never going outside again, then finally to her bed. Her children and godchildren stood by her through it all. Charlie, her daughter, and son-in-law Lance, her granddaughter Althea and grandson Dwight were the ones who were there 24-7 as the other children and got grandchildren were living abroad or living away from home. But they all played their part. Then on Sunday, May 1, her daughters Monica and Charlie had no idea that they were getting her all freshened up and eating her breakfast for the last time. Then at 9 a.m., at the age of 92, God closed her tired, weary eyes, saying, Come home, come home. It's supper time. You are going home at last. Another beautiful soul has gone home to be with the Lord. If she could talk to us right now, I think these are the words she would have said to us. Don't grieve for me, for I know I'm free to follow the path God made for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh or play. Task left undone must stay that way. I have found peace at the end of the day. If my parting had left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Oh yes, these two I will miss. Be not burdened with hearts of sorrow. Perhaps my time seem all brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. God wants me now, he sets me free. Left behind with treasured memories are five children. Monica, Beverly, Rose, Faye, and Veronica, otherwise called Charlie. Son-in-law Lance, sisters Eldridge and Dorothy, 32 grandchildren, great and great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and a host of other relatives and friends. Sleep on our beloved mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, friend. Death is not the end, it's just another path that we all must take. Rest in peace. For the next time you shake will be the hand of the Savior. The next step you take will be on streets of purest gold. The next meal will be the married supper, not one prepared by, by Monica or Charlie. And the next touch you feel will be blessing your soul. Before I say the last line, we are all going to stand and sing just one verse. That's the first verse of my faith looks up to thee. It's the last thing that we'll do for her in this church. So it's on your program. Just the first verse. Stand everybody and sing lustily. My faith looks up to thee.
open doors. And bad shape. Uh, the doors at the back were worse. We just changed them out. We are planning to change all of them. So if any of you have any little change that you can leave with us, we can give it to Sister Charlie. Yeah. We're not going to take a part of the offer. But anybody have anything that you can help us, that when you pass in here one day on your friend, you can say, at a church that may help them if you buy the wind there. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Good, that sounds good. So if you have a little thing when you're going out to campus, give Sister Charlie. Sunday is our deadline. Sunday coming, second Sunday. So, we, we, tomorrow? This tomorrow? Yes, yeah, this tomorrow. No, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow is the deadline. So, any little thing you have, you don't have to wait and do that. Ask you to give all of it. It's about a, it's estimated to cost us about 500,000 dollars. But if you have, and give us one, we're going to work for 99.99. So we'll be still on our way. So don't you worry, when you're ready, this is such a little man. Share it on behalf of the church. She's our good Samaritan. We will move on then. You ever go to a funeral and everybody that goes to the funeral, do what you do? You ever go to a funeral and everybody that goes to the funeral? Give a tribute. Yeah. You ever want to? Yeah. All right, well, everybody that comes to this funeral, then you're going to give a tribute. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Say amen, no man. Yeah. Don't forget that you went all your time, so you must come up here, go give a speech or sing a song. No, no man, all of us might give a tribute right now because we might change your position so I can You sit down for a long time, and then you might have to sit down again to listen to the word. And
that the Lord has laid on his heart for us today. May God bless you and may you have a pleasant afternoon as you worship and give thanks to the Lord. If there is something that is speaking to your heart, just ask the Lord to come in and take control and he will do the rest for you. He does. Please come. Good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading will be taken from Psalm 46, verses 1 to 10, and it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that's right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to seize unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. lesson is taken from Matthew 11 25 to 30 at that time Jesus answered and said I thank thee O father Lord of heaven and earth because thou had hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so father for so it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord.
say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. God's people say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. We come to the place of worship to give honor and glory to God for the gift of our sister here departed. We want to, on behalf of the church leaders, express to Sister Charlie and all the others our deepest sympathies, and we trust and hope that the God we serve will come to your rescue. No matter how long she has lived, we know that you would love for her to be around. But the truth is that we are all still to die one day if God should linger a little bit longer. Therefore, we must prepare ourselves for that time. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Give me your attention for just a few minutes and I want to share with you a story. Turn your Bible with me in the Gospel. According to John, chapter 11, I'll read for you from verse 38 to verse 44. John chapter 11. I'll read from verse 38 to verse 44. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, Martha said, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for it has been four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hand and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The word of the Lord. Boy, heads with me, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of another morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we are still in the land of the living. And right now, Lord, I pray that you will use me, use even me, so that the words of my mouth, Lord, the meditation of your people gathered here today will bring glory to your name. We pray in Jesus' name and the church of God, we say. Amen. The gospel according to John has been written for the Johannite community for a particular purpose. So that people who are reading the, the, this text will know that Jesus is God. Amen. So all the things that John is doing from the first line that he started by saying in the beginning is just using some signs to say that Jesus is God. Amen. As opposed to the other writers of the gospel, John does not call the signs miracles, but he calls them signs so that people have something to see that God is working out his purpose. Therefore, John's gospel became very popular. Who does not know John 3 verse 16? For God so loved the world. Many of us are getting acquainted with the gospel writer because he's giving us ideas, pointers that lead to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. Now we find a lot of scripture passages in John that people get acquainted with. John 11 verse 35, one of the shortest Bible verse in the New Testament, Jesus wept. When you read John 11 verse 25, here Jesus is giving them the reassurance 
by saying that I am the resurrection and the life. In John 14 verse 1, Jesus is giving them the comfort by saying to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. I believe that church, many of us, our hearts are troubled when we see what is happening in our world today. And we ain't just talking about Jamaica. Jamaica is a peaceful place as opposed to what is happening in Ukraine right now. But do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. In John 14, verse 6, here Jesus gave them the instruction to say to his people, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In this Maverick Gospel, we find that there are some biblical stories and those narratives are trying to bring some particulars. When you read John, there are stories in John that you do not find in any other gospel writers. Let me give you one that I love very much. The woman at the well. You remember that woman that nobody in her community wanted to be associated with her. And Jesus sat down and asking her for a glass of water. In the Marvry Gospel, you find also the text we have today. And nowhere else in the Gospel, you find that story. That Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Now, the story has some twist and turn to it. You know why? Because Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, they were Jesus' friends. So the twist and the turn to that story is that sometimes, friends, because we know that we are Jesus' friends, we do not expect certain things to happen to us. But I beg of the church to remember that there was a man in the Bible called Job. And when you read Job, you realize that Job was a faithful man, a man that was living a life of righteousness, a man that shunned evil, but yet God alone one thing to happen to him in one day he lost everything he had. Maybe some of us do not remember another one named Joseph that his brothers have decided to send him out. Yes, you are a friend of Jesus the Christ but that does not mean that bad things will not happen to you because in the Bible we find a man named David that holy for bad things happen to him. And I don't want to ask you, and you would not know from me if bad things did happen to me. So all of us, though we are friends of Jesus, bad things do happen to us. I believe that maybe Martha and Mary, they forgot about that verse in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. That says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plan to prosper you and to a future. In everything you go through church, God has a plan for you. They never knew the song that says have thine own way Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. They never knew that song. The twist and the turn of the story is that they believe that they are the friends of Jesus and things should not happen to them. But I want to pause to say to the church, we sing what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. But the text says, what a privilege. It does not mean that bad things will not happen to you. But the only thing that you have is a privilege to bring everything to God in prayer. I wish that the church will understand what you have today is a privilege. Yes, bad things are happening, but you have a privilege. Yes, your mother died, but you have a privilege. Yes, your grandmother died, but you have a privilege, my brother. So all of us who are here, we have a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Mary and Martha knew that they have the privilege, therefore they brought the sickness to Jesus' attention. They told Jesus of the situation. And Jesus never showed up. What kind of friend Jesus be? I have my brother who is sick and remember Jesus that he used to come to our house to eat. So if I call you that the man is sick, even if you couldn't come, at least you could have said a prayer. 
Jesus never showed up. I don't know about the church, but I know sometimes I ask God about something and it seems as if that Jesus is taking forever to answer me. Though I sing the song, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear this burden alone, but Jesus seemed to leave me to bring my burden on my own. Yes, but Jesus is taking his own sweet time because he has a plan. The plan was unknown to both Mary and Martha, but God knows that he has something in store for them. In the case that sometimes when Jesus, we may ask him something, we want him to act immediately, but he will not act immediately. Because he has a plan for his people. Yes. You may ask God to do something for you right now when he's taking his own sweet time to do it. Because he has a plan. And because he has a plan, he will act. Maybe not in your own time, but God will act out of mercy. There is a songwriter who says, Your grace and mercy brought me through. We are alive this morning because of you. If God never acted out of mercy for you, none of us would be here today. Out of mercy, in verse 25, Jesus wept. The story that we have in front of us today is about the mercy of God in the life of his people. He will never leave you nor forsake you. What is happening in the life of the believer is never a chance, but God is always in control. God knows that you are hurting. Therefore, God is even weeping, crying for many of you today. I believe that Jesus is weeping when Jesus is looking at the state of our nation. In the past few weeks, we have watched so many disturbing videos, so many students, basically our primary school students, this disrespecting teachers in the most kind of ways, calling a teacher all kind of names. That are not worthy enough to be repeated on this pulpit. In the past few weeks, I believe that God is weeping when a 15 year old girl was found with a gun in a school bag. Those are very disturbing news, friends. And I believe the same way that Jesus wept for Lazarus to die, Jesus is weeping over our nation right now. Mothers and fathers, you have done little to straighten up your children. I will leave that sermon for another day. But Jesus wept in the case of Lazarus. And Jesus is weeping, not just for the state of our nation, but Jesus is weeping for the state of the church. We're no longer pastors are serious men and women. We're no longer you can trust them because they are people with all kind of tricks under their color. Jesus is weeping over the church because the deacons, though they come in the morning to teach Sunday school, but in the evening you don't know which part they go. The God that we serve is weeping over the church because you trust God, but you always have to take a trip to St. Thomas because I'm not so, so it go. And I laugh. And the same one, if you don't go, you send somebody. Jesus is weeping when the church is being unfaithful, when we are called to be faithful people. You think Jesus is just weeping for Lazarus? He's weeping for Troy Baptist Church. And all of us who are here today when he sees where we are going. Friends, I believe that for many of us, Jesus is weeping because we refuse to accept him as Lord and Savior. I hear the songwriter who says, Touching Jesus is all that really matters. He is weeping because you think that your beauty can 
do anything much until you reach 92 or 93. You realize, and I'm glad to see Sir Brian and all the other family members that you have decided to put pictures of this wonderful woman when she is not really up and running while she is lying down on a bed and you do not choose to put your own pictures because it is not a family album it is a reminder that the same way we come we ain't going back that same way I've been to funeral service and I share that with some of my friends. I do not understand why some people always love to have the order of service. You take it because they want to sing the song? No, because they want to see her girl in the album. It is not the order of service, but the album. So you don't just flip, flip the page and go to where they have the pictures and look at the pictures. And I'm glad you give them a testimony that yes, you came 92 years ago and I saw you ago. You pretty today and tomorrow you're not going to be so pretty. And God is crying over you because he sees that you take your prettiness, your strength as something that will never change. I said to my church all the time, when I came here 2013, I could run from my house to Warsaw, come down to Troy and run back. And right now, if I run for five minutes, I have to take my breath. I get old, tired. God is weeping over you because you think you have time. He is weeping because He's seeing that you are making preparation for the present, but not for eternity. I am sorry to tackle my women, and they know that I love them. But the time that you take to make your makeup, if you did take that same time, or even half of it, to prepare your heart for God, your life will be different. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I know the women will not be agree with me. Like my, my brother, well dapper with one black suit, probably take 45 minutes to put on the suit. If he did take the same time to prepare his life, we don't know you, brother. And not just you, but all of us. The time that we take to go to the gym to be shaped, because summer are coming, you know. We are shaped for the summer. If we did take that time for eternity, life will be different. Therefore, God is weeping when he sees that you are paying more attention to the present as opposed to eternity. Let me leave the women alone and move on to my script. To say that the story is about the mercy of God for God's people. Because the story is talking about how oh, Jesus wept for the situation. Now, in verse 39, Jesus finally showed up. Now, I don't know what he come to do, but right now there is no use for Jesus. Because the man dead already. But I said to you earlier on that there is a plan. So therefore it will delay the process so that the plan can be perfect for what he planned for you. In verse 39, Jesus says, Remove the stone at the entrance. Because the stone at the entrance is the entrance for Lazarus to come out. Let me pause to say to the church, there is a stone in front of your life. Until you remove it, there will be no victory. Until you remove that stone, there will be no blessing. Until you remove that stone, there will be no salvation. I hear the son right there that said, there is no satisfaction without salvation. A stone must be removed today. I don't want to leave the stone, but you know that in your heart there is a trade. And I preach all the time because I will not see some of you until there is another family member who died. But let me tell you, your red eye, if you don't remove it in your life, there will be no blessing for you. We hate people for nothing. And if they die, they will go with their gifts or God will use it to another one. To the point that your head, your high red, God would never bless you the same way. He bless that sister or that brother. Remove the trade in your heart. I know you guys are loving people, but I've been to some places where they are bad mind. What you have, they want to kill you for it. But you and people are good people. So I know them may I talk about maybe those who are online. Sorry. So if you do not remove the bad mind in your life, tell me 
him where the blessing will come from. Because God wants to bless you because at least you need to remove the hatred, the bad man, the jealousy, the better than. You know them kind of way. And I'm glad when Sister Ingrid was saying that when you come to church, there is a time when we greet each other. But do you know in the same church, there are some people that will not greet you because you don't look like them. You don't dress like them. You don't have the same shorts as status. So they will pass you by. But I'm telling you today, there will be a day when all of us will be reminded to remove the stone so that victory can be experienced. The stone, friends, will take time to remove because some stone well set up, you know. And some stone heavy. You remember on the day of resurrection when Mary and the other were going to embalm the body and they were thinking about that huge stone that was in front of the grave. And you and I, we know that we have some heavy in our lives. It is not testimony day, so you won't have the chance to tell me which stone you have. But let me tell you, let the Holy Spirit help you to remove it. Because until you remove it, there will be no victory. You know, the amazing thing is that you find it more in church, but the pastors who are here today. Is that sometimes some people want to remove your stone while they keep their own stone. You know how some parents quick to say that your children rude? But if they ever pause to see them children rudeness. I wish I could say something, but I am online, so I will refrain to say. The people who talk about you take people man. And they have other people man, you know. Let me speak English. They are people men. But they will not see their own stone. They will see your stone. This is why the Bible says, before you can try to help somebody, help yourself. Too many of us we want to fix people when we leave ourselves unfixed. There will be victory until you decide to remove your own stone. Therefore, I want the church of God to say, I will remove my stone. I don't hear you. I will remove my stone. Yes, if God, if you want God to bless you, there are some stones you have to remove in your life. Sometimes stones are placed in your life by other people. Your life was nice, and all of a sudden, some people start labeling you. And they place a stone in your life. And if you're not careful, that stone will be nailed, concrete, and you will not be blessed. So, therefore, I'm asking you if you want to escape, you have to remove the stone. Some people, they don't just want to bury you, but they want to ensure that not even your dog has a chance to come out. They bury you, and they put a stone to stop even the dog. I beg of you to keep removing the stones in your life so that Jesus can do the victory. The story that we have before us today is about victory, but we need to take away doubts in our hearts. In verse 40, Jesus reminded Mary, haven't I told you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? You know, some writer says, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. Victory will be yours when you take away doubts in your life. Martha said to Jesus in verse 39b, it has been four days. Martha is warning Jesus about the state of the situation. Like Jesus never know. He's reminding Jesus that it, there's nothing that you can do. He's reminding Jesus that it is finished. More so in Mary's culture, he's reminding Jesus that the spirit is already gone. So there's nothing that Jesus can do. Can I say to someone today, 
that the situation will not stop the victory when you have faith in God. You know, it's interesting that while Jesus is preparing for deliverance, for victory, Mary, Martha rather, is telling him about defeat. Many times, friends, when God is trying to deliver you, working out your victory and your breakthrough, people are reminding Jesus about you, what kind of person you are, how worthless and wicked you are. And I hear the songwriter that says, Trust and obey, for there is no other way. To be happy in Jesus, we must trust and obey. It does not matter how far you have gone, sisters and brothers. God is calling you to remove the stone so that you can experience victory. Amen. Everyone says you will come out to nothing. But a couple of years back, people start calling you, sir. And they start begging you for favor. It is when God removing the stone. And God will let them see. People used to call you loser. But now you are no longer a loser. If they are not careful. You will even bring bread to their table. God wants all of us. To show that there is a little faith in him. Because when you trust God. He will help you to remove your own story. The story that we have before us is about God's mercy. Therefore, you need to take away the stone. The narrative that we have before us is about the victory that God has for you. Therefore, you need to take away doubt in your heart. Lastly, the story is about the glory of God that needs to be manifested. And hear what Jesus says because he wants the glory to be manifested. Take off the great clothes that are on him and let him go. Then he pauses. To say we are living in a world now when people confuse beach, party, and church. Let me make a point. Jesus clearly stated to the people to take the grave clothes on Lazarus. Why? Because there is a type of clothes that you have on. You can only look like a dummy. When you're going to beach, your two-piece is okay. But when you come into church, you must take away that grave clothes that you have on. Sometimes we wonder if some people then leave them home and they never remember which part they're gonna come. And since they're they on the road, same way, so they just show up. So we see some people start fixing themselves now. No? <laughs> you, you are pretty decent. You are pretty decent. So therefore, God is asking you and I. To take away the great clothes because what he has in store for you, that clothes can manage it. That burial clothes cannot manage victory. That burial clothes cannot manage the mercy of God. You need to undress and be dressed by the mercy and the victory of God so that the glory of God can be seen in your life. Too many of us, we put on the pity clothes. Poor me. If you didn't know what God has done for you to be here, you would have jumped and shout and praise God. Too many of us, we keep on dressing up with that graveyard dress when God is asking you to take it away because I have something for you that is greater than the grave. There are some people and you know, Caribbean people are like that. They don't want you to know how rich they are. So they have to act poor so that you know that you don't know their business. Last year, a man died in Warsaw. And I preach about the man without him knowing. Because for the nine years I've been serving in Warsaw Circuit of Baptist Churches. I've never seen that man dress clean. He dropped dead. 
They went to his house. Guess what? When they flipped the mattress, we have people from WhatsApp here, so they may know. When they flipped the mattress, people could not believe that this man has so much money and he might act like he broke it, poor, he can eat. Does that eat Pepsi and Bula? So that he don't want people to know. Friends, listen. If God bless you with enough, eat enough, eat properly, dress properly, enjoy life because God take away the dread clothes on him. Well, you know, they could have tell him in pussy till they don't chat anymore. Every day they could have wear a brand new suit. If God provide it for me. Because God is telling me, take out the grave clothes, brother. Stop moving like you broke. Drink properly. Eat properly. Enjoy life. Because I'm asking you to take away the grave clothes. By hiding the money that you have, that doesn't mean anything. Because at the end of the day, the same people that you never love, and them are going to grab it and go use it and go drink wrong over the day. Because you are just a fool. Sorry, cut that for me. No, don't get, don't get overly excited. I am not talking about the fact that when you have and you are acting like you are different than anybody else, you need to help people. But at the same time, live good, buy a good bed. Drink properly, eat properly, buy new house, buy new car, until God come, take away the great clothes. Jesus said, let him loose, because I have something greater for him, that his great clothes cannot manage it. Jesus is saying, when he said to them, take the grave clothes, he's telling them, let him enjoy my mercy. Let him enjoy the victory. And let him experience the glory. Take off the things that stop you from seeing God face to face. Take off that attitude that stops you from praising God. Amen. And you know, I love all the texts that pericope ends when Jesus says, let him loose. Those of you who are accustomed to come to country rally, when somebody come to sing and the person taking forever to start the song, what we say, loose. Because you're taking too long, man. Now you have to sing. And Jesus says right now, Lazarus, I want you to get loose. Many of you need to get loose right now because you are taking too long with that grave clothes on you. Some young men need to get loose. Some young women need to get loose. Some old men and women need to get loose. <laughs> yes, Mr. Green. God has to loose them up. With all due respect, and I'm closing, you behave too much like a doctor. I've never seen one before. I would love to. The first one I would love to see is my father. But he ain't coming back. So there's no opportunity for you to see no doppy. Even if they tell you there's doppy. But you are alive. You are acting like a doppy. Because you are walking the streets of gold with doppy clothes on you. Let go of the things. That make you believe that God will come soon, but you will have time. You are adopting. If you believe that you have tomorrow, I will come back to preach tomorrow morning, but let me make that point to the church people. When worship is always boring, you know what kind of clothes you have on? Dopey clothes, grave clothes. You don't hear me, church? When church always too long, don't be close, brother. Because the truth is, 
We do not have any problem for our children to spend their entire day at school in the company of the teachers. But on Sunday morning, they have to rest because they are tired. Great clothes. You are never tired to go to the market until 7 o'clock. I mean p.m. But if church ever ended by 1 o'clock like today, you get very much upset. So, a long time me have you know. I, 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 I'm ending now. I'm ending now. When the church fails to understand that the way we are letting our nation to go is the way to destruction, we are in double close. Therefore, take off, take off the double close. Dress with righteousness. Because God has mercy on you. Weeping for you. Therefore, you have to remove the stone. He has a victory that he wants you to experience. Therefore, you have to remove the doubt. He wants you to see his glory. Therefore, you have to take off the great clothes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for your mercy, your victory, and your glory. We know that we are able to experience them right now if we just say yes to you. Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not choose but don't you lead. Loving God, we pray that you will minister to the hearts of those who do not know you right now. So that, Lord, they will give their lives to you and experience your mercy, your grace, and enjoy your eternal victory. Bless us, Lord, as we put the body of Sister Patrick to rest. Help us to be reminded we are next. Abide with us, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name and the church of God be saved. Please stand with me. As we sing the hymn of response, and I challenge those who are watching online too, they can make their own commitment to God so that they will not walk the streets with the grave clothes but let God's mercy God's victory and glory be evident in their life and you are here today you can say what a friend we have in Jesus
remember that there is mercy for you. That there is victory for you and God wants you to experience his victory. Come. While we pray for you and while we pray with you. But while they come, some of you are in this church and you do not know God yet. Would you let this opportunity go by and you do not accept him as Lord and Savior? Is there one today who wants to give his own life to the Lord? The God of mercy, victory, and glory. Even if it is in the family that if there is any one of you, you do not know the Lord yet. Make this funeral service the way you answer to God. Ah.
There's many of you too broken to come. That's why you should come.
You know, it's amazing. It's amazing that I won't be at all my four churches tomorrow. But I preach to all my four churches this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. I feel like worship. But you see, Pat Moore, look for me, you know, because they know, say, me not keep long funeral, but today is a different day. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me. Please stand with me. Please stand with me. We'll move from this place of worship to the burial ground at New Hope. Where we'll put Sister Patrick remain to the ground. Most of us will be driving, so you know that we have already killed half of the day. So we have to do that swiftly and quickly. We ask that you do that in order. The pallbearers are already lined up to help us to the casket to put in the van and even drive to go to the place of rest. And we thank you for enhancing the worship experience. And God has been in this place this morning. Amen, church. Please let us receive the benediction. May the Trine God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, help us to experience His mercy, His victory, and His glory. Not just for today, but forevermore. And the people of God will say, The recession of Him, there's a land. That is fair. There's a land that is fair. Yeah. Uh -huh.
kom sa sa kapito. Look here, take a quick picture here. Ready now? Yeah? Ready now? The book of Isaiah 11 verse 6 The wolf will live with the lamb, the leper will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child shall and lead the little them. Child shall and lead the little them. child shall lead them. <laughs> We say, ho, oh, holy, holy, ho, oh, holy, holy, ho, oh, holy, 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 ho, oh, holy, holy, oh, holy, 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 ho, holy, holy, ho, holy, 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 ho, holy, 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 holy,
Where I can't come in then Say I make a book for your neighbor Say I make a book for your neighbor Say I make a book for your neighbor I beg your book for your neighbor Say I make a book for your neighbor Say I make your book for your neighbor Say I make a book for your neighbor Say I make your 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 book for your Holy, 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 Mount Zion. We are going there. Holy, 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 Mount Zion. Lord, we say, oh, holy, holy, oh, holy, holy, oh, holy, 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 oh, holy, Mount Zion. Lord, let me buy.
The book of Isaiah 11 verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat. 
the calf and the lion and the yearling together in the little child's shoulder. The little child's shoulder. The little child's I'm here to listen to you, but listen to DJ. We can now eat it. RG7, more be a I'm to rock than I'm Book of Isaiah 11 verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child shall the little child shall be. I'm a 
we we call to worship let us prepare ourselves to put to the grave the remain of our sister as we prepare ourselves to do this act let us sing the song in our order of service my faith looks up to thee as we prepare ourselves for the committal of the body my faith looks up the Lamb of Calvary, Savior, now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day be holy. May thy rich grace impart, may thy rich grace strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire, my zeal, as thou hast died for me, oh may my love to thee, pure warm, pure, Woman sends a living. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Almighty God. Let us pray. God of life, we come to you to give you thanks for the life of your daughter you lent to us for a few years. We celebrate our wonderful memories. And Lord, it is time for us to live by the principles that she lived by. Gracious and loving Father, we know that she was not perfect, but she was a faithful Christian. Therefore, we pray that, Lord, her life will be a testimony so that all of us who do not know you as yet can follow and live by. Continue to send your angels to abide in this place of rest so that as they await of your second coming, they will be peacefully resting. We pray in Jesus' name and the church of God say, Amen. For as much as it has pleased God in God's mercy to receive the body of our dear sister here departed. We commit her body to the ground and we say earth to earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. May her soul continue to rest in peace. All bearers, please. You want to on No, just have that. back over there. <laughs> we continue by singing, shall we meet, shall we gather at the river? Let us sing to the glory of our child God. Shall we gather at the Men. river where my angels feet are drawn with this crystal tides forever flowing by the throne of grace no. Yes, we will gather at the river that beautiful 
The book of Isaiah 11 verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child shall and lead the little them. Child shall and lead the little them. child shall lead them. <laughs> The mic did off, now the mic on. Re repeat everything. Yeah. Thanks for watching, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. And all the people that come out. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And the PF of the
Uh, so people here are we from the Patrick family. Um, the late S.A. Patrick, Thanksgiving service. Uh, I think some other picture. Right? I just want to sing a picture. Yeah, right? yeah. You want to take it somewhere? The book of Isaiah 11 verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leper will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child shall and leave the little them. child shall leave the little child shall leave <laughs> We say, oh, holy, holy, oh, holy, holy, oh, holy, 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 So peeps, there have it. Thanks for watching live. Thanks for tuning in. Of S. Patrick Thanksgiving service. All right. So big up all the viewers, and remember share and subscribe this live video, okay? So there we come to the end of Miss Essie, Patrick, thanks for service. Alright, so these are the family plot. This is the family plot from the new one to so We have Warren Lynn, now this one. Well, Patrick. Okay. We have Arvin Patrick over there, sir. And this is a Papa Patrick. And this is Essie Patrick, okay? Husband over there, sir. We don't want to. The book of Isaiah 11 verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leper will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child shall and leave the little them. Child shall and leave the little them. child shall leave them. <laughs> We 